Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday, June 5th, 2017. Let's begin the tour today by looking at the SOI from the Long Paddock site. Negative 9 for today, but the 30-day average still just a little bit above the zero mark. Notice that we came up quite a bit from April through May into positive territory, and even the 90-day average is only... I mean, we can go ahead and round it to the next nearest whole number and call it minus two. And so we're still about five points from what the Bureau of Meteorology typically looks at when they're expecting El Nino conditions. Normally that negative seven in the SOI is sort of the magic number. So we have a ways to go. Had a pretty good crash of the SOI recently. The Southern Oscillation Index, of course, is the pressure pattern across the Southwest Pacific. And I'll show you in a minute. I'll explain it a little better, hopefully, in another graphic. First, uh, and this is what kind of results from how the SOI works, sea surface temperature anomalies, because the pressure patterns change how the winds act around the globe. And so today's update, the 5th of June, uh, notice in the Eastern Pacific now, we have a few more little cold areas showing up sort of fracturing this idea of an El Nino uh, getting started. And even out here in the traditional El Nino area that we usually look at, um, that little ribbon right there is pretty much right on top of normal. Just anywhere, you know, these two squares here, I call this the normal region. Once you get to the right or the left of those, for me at least, that signifies you're starting to deviate into the anomaly territory, departure from normal. And uh, this whole region through here not warming right now. And we will get a new subsurface update in the next few days. That'll be interesting to see. And, of course, the Atlantic out here in the main development region still warming, even right up against the coast of Africa here. No upwelling from strong winds coming off, blowing the water away. There's no mixing to speak of. Well, there is mixing, but it's not substantial enough to... I mean, you don't even see a, any blue patches through this region at all. The main development region out here solidly above the long-term average and that curls up even off the Iberian Peninsula still and then to the north is this colder water uh, and it extends through the Caribbean to some extent. And if we look at something interesting, this is from April the 28th. I had tweeted that day that uh, we had a little over a month to go and even then the anomalies were running pretty strong and not to, you know, at the risk of calling Joe Bastardi out, because that's not what I'm trying to do here, you know, I said, will it sustain? We shall see. And he said, not likely. See the Euro mean sea level pressure on the weeklies. Trades will roar late May and June. And, well, this is what it looked like when I tweeted that in the deep tropics here. And this is what it looks like in June. So it's just kind of showing you that mm, sometimes these models, even the Euro, and that's what he talked about, are not exactly on top. Now, late May is gone, so that part didn't work out. It's still early June, so maybe in the next 25 days the trades will roar through here and this will all cool off. We shall see. But so far, and that's my point here, that as uh, good a job as he does at the pattern recognition, and I think he does a great job of that overall. This one so far has not worked out very well. Looking at it on a global scale here, the latest, again, this is June 5th, very cold relative to average. I won't say very cold. Some of it is. In the northern Atlantic, and typically you see this filled in with warm anomalies to get a true warm AMO signal, but it's really interesting that the subtropical Atlantic up here in the far north Atlantic, colder than average, again with this corridor of positive anomalies, a neutral Pacific out here, uh, colder than normal off the uh, Baja out, getting close to Hawaii. Uh, you know, how much more can we... We'll keep looking at this, obviously, every week, but boy, it just seems like the signs are there. What happens this time of uh, the hurricane season, the first 10 days? Great map from the National Hurricane Center showing the climatology. These are the points of origin and the tracks that they took. And uh, you see the eastern Pacific's typically busier, but, you know, Beatrice was nothing. Very short-lived in terms of intensity. 
it did bring heavy rainfall and that resulted in some fatalities and I never ever want to downplay the possibility of heavy rainfall from these systems but in terms of energy output and intensity um, the first two storms Adrian and Beatriz in the East Pacific have not amounted to very much and usually when that happens the Atlantic will take over at some point not always but if you've tracked this stuff long enough you tend to start picking up some things and when the East Pacific's not very busy the Atlantic typically is this time of year these are the areas that we watch no development usually expected out this way despite even in this warm period that we're going through now uh, warm temperatures out in the deep tropics the shear is just too strong uh, and other factors at play as well. I just thought I'd show you that. So the National Hurricane Center in the Eastern Pacific, nothing over the next few days, same for the Atlantic. And we can look at the visible satellite shot. Some energy in here maybe left over from Beatriz, but it's really not going to amount to much. A few model runs here and there from different global models have hinted at development and then it drops. Uh, overall conditions just not favorable. And you can see out in the Atlantic here, uh, despite the positive anomalies that we are observing, not much in the way of cloud cover. We don't really start looking out this way until August, but sometimes it percolates in July, so we'll see. The wind shear still pretty strong. This is a great chart, and others like it from the University of Wisconsin. Upper level winds generally just too strong across this region, and you can see that they're all moving from west to east even down here in the deep tropics and in the subtropics as well. So pretty much everything is from left to right. And if anything's trying to come across from the east, any easterly waves of low pressure, they're going to run headstrong into that shear and nothing will develop. That's a part of why this time of year is typically not that active. The shear has to relax. You can have 95 degree ocean water to a depth of 300 meters and if you have too much strong wind shear, you're not going to get development uh, of any significance. So, uh, what else do we have? Eastern Pacific, Southeast Pacific, specifically. Here's El Salvador and just south of there. A little blob of convection, but no organization seen from it right now. Same with this system, well to the south and west of Mexico. So, no worries there. A wider shot shows us uh, out to Hawaii even. Nothing to worry about in this. I've mentioned it before, very, very telltale sign of stable air when you see that kind of cloud cover. And this is reaching down far enough south, uh, and even somewhat down here even, this milky color. Very stable atmosphere, and I'm telling you, the longer we go before we see a Pacific hurricane, and when I do my update on Thursday, I'm going to do them twice a week now. This is nothing else really going on, so we don't want to bore you on a daily basis, so we'll just do it twice a week. I know it's not boring. A lot of people enjoy sort of, you know, we like to watch the pot boil collectively, right? But Thursday, I will, um, let's look at some climatology. Uh, and a lot of you can look this up between now and Thursday, and you'll know before I do, or at least before I talk about it. When is the first uh, hurricane typically occurring in the eastern Pacific? So are we going to get to the point where we start lagging behind climatology in the eastern Pacific. We'll see. Now that too would be interesting because as I mentioned, the longer the eastern Pacific takes, typically the Atlantic will be dominant over those two basins. Not always, but eh, we'll see. All right. So a good quiet several days ahead and not much going on, obviously. So relax a little bit for a lot of you. School is out. Uh, I know for my children, this is the last few days of school, so that'll be good. Uh, more time to relax, more time for me to work on hurricane-related stuff, and uh, maybe hit the beach. And uh, water temperatures are darn near 80 degrees. I went out to Wrightsville Beach yesterday, and boy, it was fantastic. Only going to warm up from there, so enjoy it. I know I am. Have a good rest of your Monday afternoon. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. It does mean a lot to me. I appreciate it very much. I'm Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again on Thursday.